from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Mm, 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 mm. Looking at this story, many of you have sent in here. Uh, this was in the Wall Street Journal. Glad to see that you're all uh, seeing articles from the Wall Street Journal. Many of you are getting them from uh, Yahoo, but that's okay. The material is getting out there, and that's good. Here is the uh, story, and uh, easily a hundred of you sent this in, so it's uh, clearly something you wanted to hear me talk about. The article written by Robert Frank says on a recent episode of the TV show Dirty Sexy Money, ABC's soapy drama about the filthy rich, heiress Karen Darling gets married for the fourth time to a golf pro. Minutes after the ceremony, she decides she wants a divorce leaving the golfer to wonder about his $3 million guarantee in the prenuptial agreement. I still get the check, right? He asks. Of course, darling sneers, I made a vow. (laughs) Says here marrying for money isn't just grist for television plot lines. Well, with the wealth boom creating unprecedented riches and greater opportunities for gold digging by both genders, price tag partnerships and checkbook breakups are increasingly making headlines. Even more surprising, according to a new survey, are the going rates for today's mercenary unions. Celebrities get the most attention, of course, whether it's my personal hero, Kevin Federline, the backup dancer turned millionaire ex of Britney Spears, or Heather Mills, Paul McCartney's estranged second wife, who is set to receive tens of millions of dollars when her divorce is final, according to the British press. Yet even among the workaday or wannabe wealthy, marrying for money has become a popular pursuit. In an infamous personal ad posted on Craigslist Craigslist this summer, a 20-something New Yorker who described herself as spectacularly beautiful wrote that she was looking for a man who made at least $500,000 a year. She said she tried dating men earning $250,000, but she said that, quote, wasn't getting me to Central Park West. The ad inspired all manner of parodies and follow-ups, including one by an investment banker who replied that since his money would grow over time, but her beauty would fade, the offer didn't make good business sense. She was, he said, a depreciating asset. We talked about that on the air several times. To many New Yorkers, jaded by multi-million dollar condos and wall-to-wall wealth, The salary request probably seems reasonable, maybe even low. Yet nationally, the going rate is much lower. According to a survey by Prince & Associates, a Connecticut-based wealth research firm, the average price that men and women demand to marry for money these days is $1.5 million. 
You believe they've actually got it narrowed down to that amount? The survey polled 1,134 people nationwide with incomes ranging between thirty and $60,000, squarely in the median range for nationwide incomes. The survey asked, how willing are you to marry an average-looking person that you liked if they had money? Fully, two-thirds of women and half of the men said they were very or extremely willing to marry for money. Did you hear that? Let's review. All of you on eHarmony.com looking for soulmates. Fully two-thirds of women. Two-thirds. And half of the men said they were very or extremely willing to marry for money. The answers varied by age. Women in their 30s were the most likely to say they would marry for money, 74%. While men in their 20s were the least likely, 41%. I'm a little shocked at the numbers, says Pamela Smock, a sociologist at the University of Michigan who has studied marriage and money. It's kind of against the notion of love and soulmates and the main motivations to marry in our culture. I'm not shocked at all. I never believe that soulmate crap, but I've been telling you this for years. And here's a sociologist at the University of Michigan. She's shocked. What is shocking about this? If there's anything the Tom Likas show proves on a daily basis, it's that everybody has their price. Everybody has their price. says here in the story, still, Ms. Smock has found in her own research that having money does encourage people to tie the knot. She says it's more likely that a couple will marry if they have money and if the man is economically stable. Yeah. It says here, women aren't the only ones with the gold-digging impulse of the Prince and Associates study. 61% of men in their 40s said they would marry for money. Finish the sentence. If they could find anybody who'd pay them. I mean, that's the difference right there. Because we all know we can marry for money, get our claws on the cash, and then get divorced. So why wouldn't a man marry for money? I'll tell you what, I'll go so far as to say, if I didn't have my own money to protect, I would marry for money. And then I'd take what I can get and get the hell out of there. Just because 61% of the men in their 40s said they would marry for money doesn't mean it would ever happen. How many men in their 40s get offered money to get married to anybody? Seriously. Don't start speculating about Liza Minnelli or anybody like that, okay? <laughs> that would be wrong. Well, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, come on, who's going to pay a man in his 40s to get married? Anything. So the fact that 61% of men in their 40s said they would do that, that's entertaining, but uh, wholly irrelevant. The fact that women in their 30s, 74% of them said they would marry for money, tells you what I've been telling you. Women are gold diggers. Because it is much more likely a woman will be offered money or offered a lifestyle, or offered to stay home and raise babies, if they're in their 30s, it's much more likely than being a man at almost any age. So when 74% of the women surveyed in their 30s said they would marry for money, that is scientific evidence of what I've been telling you about women being gold diggers. Now remember, 74% is not 100%. Okay, The other 26% would probably not marry for money. But 74% is an overwhelming majority, and it pretty much buttresses my argument that women tend to be gold diggers. If they can, they are. And I really don't feel like paying for a relationship. The price is too high. Says here the matrimonial price tag varies by gender and age. Asked how much a potential spouse would have, need to have to be uh, money, marriage, material. Women in their 20s said $2.5 million. Okay, so that's the price 
If you want a woman in her 20s, you have to have $2.5 million. doesn't mean you have to pay her $2.5 million, but you have to have it. I passed that a long time ago. It says here the going rate fell to $1.1 million for women in their 30s and rose again to $2.2 million for women in their 40s. Ms. Smock and the founder of Prince & Associates, Russ Allen Prince, both attribute the fluctuation to the assumption that 30-something women feel more pressure to get married than women in their 20s, so they're willing to lower the price. And you like that. It says here, by their 40s, women are more comfortable being independent, so they're willing to hold out for more cash. Men have cheaper requirements. In the Prince survey, they're asking price overall was $1.2 million, with men in their 20s asking for a million, and men in their 40s asking $1.4 million. You're never going to get it. it. Says here, Douglas Freeman, a tax and estates attorney in California, who works with wealthy families, said the men's numbers are lower because they would feel threatened by women worth several million dollars. He says the men aren't going to say they want $10 million because they wouldn't be comfortable with a woman who's worth so much more than they are. Says here, whatever the case, the prices for both men and women seem surprisingly low given the new landscape of wealth. While one or two million dollars may sound like a lot to people making thirty thousand dollars, it's hardly enough to transform someone's life or make them rich by contemporary billionaire standards. No one in the survey quoted a price of more than three million dollars. So you see, if you've got three million, you can have anybody you want. Isn't that what I've been telling you folks? Money, power, and fame. If you've got $3 million, you can have anybody you want. It says here, of course, when the mercenary marriage proves disappointing, there's always divorce. Among the women in their 20s who said they would marry for money, 71% said they expected to get divorced, the highest of any demographic. So you see, there are women getting married to get money, planning on getting divorced. Says here only 27% of men in their 40s expected to divorce. Says Mr. Prince, for these women, it's just another step on their journey to the good life. They want to be paid what they think they're worth and then move on. Is that an outrageous story or what? Doesn't it prove what I've been telling you? Doesn't it prove that it's all about money, power, and fame, that people have their price? Look at the overwhelming number of women who would get married for money. And the even larger percentage of women in their 20s who expect to marry somebody with money and then divorce them. What does this tell you? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. I'm all worked up now. I'm in a frothy frenzy. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Like a Show at 1 800 5800 Tom. That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. We're talking about a story from the Wall Street Journal called Marrying for Love. Dot, dot, dot of money. <laughs> and it appears that a uh, very large percentage of people have their price. I mean, think about this. Would you marry somebody for money? And would you stay married to them, or would you try to figure out a way to divorce them and take what you could take? I mean, as a man, I, I know it's highly unlikely that a woman would do that. I guess there could be a cougar who would uh, pay uh, pay money to get a uh, an eighteen year old to marry her, or a twenty one year old, or something. That's possible. But I think most men, uh, it would be unlikely that we would ever receive an offer like that. So it's easy for us to say, oh, yeah, sure, I'd marry for money, but who'd pay us? So um, I know that if any woman ever offered me money uh, and she was, uh, you know, fat and fugly and stuff, I it, it depends on how much money there was. And for me, it would take a lot more than a million because I passed a million a long time ago. 
But, uh, you know, if I thought that I could uh, marry her without a prenup and then uh, do what women do to men all the time, uh, just scoop up as much of her cash and property as I could and take it with me on the way out, uh, you bet I'd consider that. You bet I would do it. But uh, I know there are people out there, for example, I know there are women who marry rich men and then they tell you how much they love them. Maybe they do love them. But sometimes I wonder, like, do you really love this guy? You know, I see some of these guys, CNBC is one of these networks that is, it's a parade. By the way, I watch it all day long because I've got money and I like to know how to make more money. But the people who appear on there, I mean, dreadful, scary, ugly, a bunch of badly dressed, sweaty individuals with no sense of style many of whom are worth 10, 20, 30 billion dollars. <laughs> and uh, you sometimes see some of these CEOs married to much younger women who profess their undying love to these guys. I do believe that there are some women who marry a very rich guy and love him very, very much, you know, because being rich as he is, he's just a protector, and women like protectors. And then I believe there are women who... Uh, would get married to somebody to get their money, and they have a game plan. And then how long would they stay? Would they stay the whole 10 years? As, as In California, you get alimony for life if you're married for 10 years. Would they stay for 10 years? Would they bail in three and take, you know, a million or two? What would they do? It's curious how this works. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Gordy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, hello, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Uh, actually, I had to giggle. I, I've never been offered money to get married, but I was recently offered fifty grand to stay in my marriage, which I thought was interesting. But your wife offered you fifty grand to stay in your marriage? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm her third husband, and uh, she just uh, she finally realized that's uh, the problem, sir. That's why guys leave. But uh, yeah, I just said no. I wanted out. I got myself a younger, hot honey, and uh, you know, I got somebody treats me right. So the money was irrelevant to me. Holy cow. And what were her shortcomings? What was it that made you want to leave? Uh, and and the other guys? Well, actually, I mean, in all fairness to her, I mean, when I, I when she met me, I really hadn't had my act together yet. And she likes to, you know, uh, hook up with guys eight, ten years her junior, play the motherly role. You know, we grow up and mature and get it together. And uh, she's still acting like mom. And I said, you know what, this ain't working for me. I got to go. And uh, she was so upset with it that she said, look, you know, I can go 50 grand, stay here. Uh, have your girlfriends on the side, but just you know, stay married to me, and uh, that's what she offered. But I still didn't want it. I left. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's a sad commentary on her and, and a lot of women. Her problem now, she's uh, just turned fifty, and as you as you say, Tom, I mean, the game's over for women that are you know over forty five, especially. And uh, you know, I'm a younger guy, and uh, you know, she just wanted to keep me there all, all the way she could. And I don't doubt if she had access to a million dollars, as you said, she would have offered it to me, but she doesn't have it. Wow. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad. Uh, but I don't say it to, to beat up on her or, or what's your, your topic, but it does happen. But uh, I agree with you that most men will not uh, sacrifice their freedom for a chunk of money, because even if uh, you, know, you were to take it, after a while, let's face it, we're guys. You know, so if it isn't working for us, uh, we're guys. We just need. Ma, do you, uh, but you see, I learned from women. If I married for money, there's nothing stopping me from banging other people. Of and then course. when I get divorced, I'm still entitled to the money. Well, that's true, but that's a bit of a mercenary attitude. I don't think. Men well, that, but that's what I'm saying. I, well, I don't know because there were all these guys in this survey who who did say they would marry for money, even though it's highly unlikely anyone would offer them money. Well, that's true that they won't offer it. But I think that's one of those uh, questions. Most guys, yeah, if the price tag's high enough, here, here's a new sports car, the whole bit. I mean, it says and here, think, it I says think, here, it says here, sixty-one percent of men in their forties would marry for money. Uh, but uh, what type of uh, economic status are they in? I don't think someone of your caliber, Tom, with your income, would marry for money because you've made your your fortune. Or if you get some depends money, on how much. Huh? How depends much? on how much. You would you yourself would marry for money. I'll tell you what, if I could buy a radio station with that money or uh, buy a network, why not? Well, the price tag for you'd be much higher than a million dollars. Well, that's why I'm saying I'd be, it would have to yeah. be a very high price. It would have to be more than I already have. 
Yeah, but you get a lot of guys. You know, it's basically, you know, you see them out there. You, you profile them all the time. You know, they, they knocked up their high school sweetheart, and they got nothing at the age of 45 other than a you know, 10-year-old car and a rent payment. Yes. Sure, not, that would appeal to a guy like that, of course. Uh, but, but, of course, highly unlikely a man would ever actually get an offer like that. But it is not unlikely that a woman who's halfway attractive would get an offer. Well, that's true. But, you know, it's interesting. I'm here in South Florida. I know one woman personally. She's 62. It's done every possible uh, reconstructive plastic surgery. Looks great. She, for a 60-year-old woman, she looks really good. But she is she is a mercenary. She dates guys based on their financial statement. She will do them for a short period of time. And within about two to three weeks of rolling in the sheets, she she will come right out. Hey, I need seven, eight thousand dollars for whatever. The guys can't uh, write the check. She's on to the next guy. And I run into which, her. by the way, by the way, I you see you see that as a negative. I see this as a positive because if I've gotten six, seven, eight weeks banging a really hot chick, <laughs> who's the loser when I say no to the money? That's a good point. And you brought up a good point that should be like uh, on a T-shirt. You know. You Give the women the money. Just make them think they're going to receive it. Do you know how many women I have banged knowing that down the line they're going to put the hand out and and when they do, I just tell them no? I think you could probably fill a stadium with that. And, and then and then they, they act like they're uh, like somehow they're going to hurt me by leaving. It's like, are you kidding? I already got what I wanted. That was it, and on to the next. But a lot of guys mistakenly think if they if they don't keep handing out the money, it's as if there's like this one itis syndrome, like this is the only girl that will stay with me if I don't pay her. Well, there's millions of them out there. Go on to the next. Well, you know what I said? I, I revealed this on the air the other day, but one night, uh, Gary Zabransky, our producer, and I were sitting on my terrace overlooking Los Angeles. All right. Beautiful view. And um, I, you know, in our chemically altered state, I looked over at Gary and I said, I got to say this on the air, Gary. You know what? I was We were chemically altered at the time. I said to him, you realize over half of everybody has a vagina? That's half of, yeah. Half of everybody. I mean, have, certainly half of everybody in the United States. There's 150 million vaginas walking around. Then why do men get hung up on that one broad that they're doing as if that is the uh, be all end all and never happen again? And they do. Well, that's, well, that's that's the point I'm trying to remind guys. Don't get hung up on any one of them. There's 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 many more where that one came from. There's thousands of them right around the corner. From yes, everybody. that's right. But I think it falls under the category of what we grew up with: get lucky, and they think they. I mean, I am amazed at the cost of vagina in this country because the reality is, if you call women's bluff on it, there's somebody around the corner. You can just press the buy it now button, like eBay, and you get it tonight. Oh, uh, you can rent the stuff for fifty bucks if you shop properly. Right. <laughs> exactly. And I think down here in South Florida, and more well, so you're out there in California, but here in South Florida. Uh, it's just notorious. I mean, you, you have, as you said, I think they, that survey's correct. The girls in their 20s, the young honeys, yeah, they got a higher price tag. The uh, gals get past 32, 33. They know the clock is ticking, so uh, they're nowhere near as picky. And, uh, of course, over 40, it's game over unless they just want to start dating guys that are in their 60s. So. And uh, unfortunately for a lot of gals that take care of themselves, they can't bring themselves to go with the older guy that's you know, bald and fat and gray. Uh, but the reality is, let's face it, you know, you're 40 years old and got your act together and making a good buck. You know, you're going for a young honey. That's just the way the world is since Moses walked the earth, you know? It still is that way. There's no doubt about it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. John on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Oh, man, you, you want to see these broads out here, man. I had a girl, girl I'm married to now. She, uh, I gave her a prenups agreement on day one and said, hey, if you know, if you're dating me, if this ever gets to marriage, this is what you're going to be signed. She said, okay, okay. They came when we were supposed to get married. I handed it over to her. I said, here, sign here before I say I do. She says, I'm not signing. I said, see you later. Got in my car and left. And her dad chased me down and said, hey, where are you going? And I said, hey, I told your girl that, you know, she was signed a prenuptial agreement. Watch your mouth. We're on the air. Uh, okay. But, yeah, I mean, there's no point, you know, losing all your stuff over some broad. I totally agree. I mean, I didn't have a whole lot then. I only had three houses then, but I was like, you know, I'm not going to lose lose a whole lot. I mean, since then, my grandpa died, and, I mean, I got, like, almost 1,700 houses now. So, 
I mean, they're little mobile homes, but let me tell you, they're little mobile homes that are paid for are sure the cash cow. Absolutely. So, I mean, these girls that are out there trying to, you know, take your money just because you're 20, 21 years old and you're dating some 18-year-old chick, guys, you, you can make millions. Don't even try and think that, you know, she's going to talk you down and tell you, know, blah, 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 you're not going to make it, you're not going to do whatever. Just swing for the fence and try it. And when you file bankruptcy, get up and do it again. I mean, I filed bankruptcy once when I was, like, 19. Who cares? I mean, get up and go at it again. I mean, you're not going to, you know, knock you down. Sounds good to me. Hey there, Tom, Dino, Gary, and Art. This is Aaron from the Cafe at calling to wish you all a happy holidays and to let you know that I'm glad that you're here. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of my program. It's my program, that's right. We appreciate it. (laughs) 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Okay, we're talking about this survey that came out. And it appears everybody has their price to get married. Would uh, would you do that? Jameson on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jameson. First time caller and a long time listening to you, Father. I love it, son. Well, it's just that I'm um, approaching 40. I thought I did the right thing, waited until I have a very good job. I'm making under six figures, got my own house, got a nice sports car, got a motorcycle. Thought I found the right woman because she wanted to settle down and have a family. She has a master's degree and uh, finished law school. And I thought, hey, well, you know, can't do wrong. So I figure that she's not going to marry for me for what I have because she has potential to make a lot more money than I do. Year and a half into our marriage, we have a daughter. Found out that all she complained about, all she talked about is money. So now I'm into eight months into my divorce because I found out that whatever I make, whatever I own, it's not enough. It's never enough. It's always about money, and everything that she complains about is money. We don't have money for a nanny. We don't have money to uh, buy what she wants. So I finally just said, you know, I can't make you happy. Money's, I don't have enough to make you happy. So I went ahead and filed for divorce. And that's what happened to me. And I'm hoping that all the guys out there, young and old, doesn't matter. You know, you waited until you thought that you're doing the right thing with your career and everything else, but that's uh, most women out there. And let me guess, you never never demanded a prenup, did you? I did not. I did not. How do you feel about that now? Um, Well, I got the house before marriage, so uh, hopefully I'm protected that way. Did she sign a, did she sign, did she sign a quick claim deed? I think that's what she's trying to do right now with her lawyer. What's that? Um, trying to file something that, uh, because her lawyer and her been discussing with my lawyer saying that I said verbally that during our marriage she get half of the house. But I said, well, that, I did not say anything like that. But verbally in the court of law doesn't hold water. So that, and right now that's what they're trying to, uh, to do trying to claim that it's you know that her name is partially on the deed somewhere well don't be so sure don't be so sure that verbally doesn't hold water in court there are verbal agreements upheld in court all the time for example one of the ways they try to get you is you know after you get married you start saying hey Susie and steve are coming to our house this weekend Mm -hmm. and then so she tells the attorney well he called it our house 
Right. And the attorney says, well, yeah. on how many occasions? And so she tells, and then he says, do you know other people who heard him refer to it as our house? And she'll say, oh, yes. Exactly. I think that's what her lawyer um, is trying to do. And um, But you know what, Tom? I've learned my lesson. I've listened to you for a long time, and I have to cut my loss. If it has, if it happened to be, the house is not like multi-million dollar house. It's still, uh, I'm still paying, making payment. If we happen to sell, maximum I can profit out of it is 150 grand after all said and done. If she want a half, I have to just cut my loss and just go and start over and just get away from this chaos. Wow. I mean, I've been... Yeah, I mean, the, that's what the point that I'm at right now. I don't want to be so stressed out regarding this and regarding my daughter and what she has put me through because all she wants, I mean, every conversation, even just last night, you know, she's talking about that, uh, you know, she wanted a nanny right now and, um, Someone who cook clean for her, and I, I said, no, I'm, I don't have that kind of money, but I'm not going to be at home cooking and cleaning for you so you can study for your bar exam. Outrageous stuff. Yep, outrageous, Tom. Well, Jameson, all I can say is good luck, and you should have signed a prenup. What can I say? You should have done it. 1-800-5800-TOM, that is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Gene on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Gene. I just uh, wanted to say my dad was married to a lady, his fourth marriage. was married to her for about two years. About a year into the marriage, um, he was going to leave her. She always kicked us out of the house, always had to go find her own place to live. And um, about three weeks later... She said, if I give you $10,000, will you come back? So he takes the $10,000 and goes back. And um, about six months later, they get a divorce. So now he's uh, free and clear. He's been divorced for about uh, two, three years now. And he's living the high life. He um, makes $150,000 a year, has a 3,000-square-foot house in Las Vegas, has... Um, a different woman over at the house every night of the week. And what I don't understand now is that he wants to get married again. Seems like he made some money at it. He did. And she used to gamble a lot, and she would win all the time, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 at a time. Well, he would get half of that every single time she won. So he did actually come out pretty decent in that marriage, and whenever they got divorced, she just took her stuff, and he took his stuff. Well, her ex-husband was worth about $50 million, and they were uh, married for, like, 20 years or something like that. So she got a lot. She's been getting a lot of money out of that. I mean, she had a nice house of her own, $750,000 house back three years ago. and She had a $80,000 Porsche and a $50,000 know. I mean, she, she was pretty well off herself, but she was just kooky. Totally amazing. <laughs> People have their price, man, I'm telling you. I don't feel like such a freak not getting married. I really don't. I really don't. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. San Diego ain't the same without you. That's for damn sure. Thank you, Brian. It's a tiered scale the way I see it. That one caller said for fifty grand it wasn't enough to buy him out, but I'll tell you what, if that price was higher... I guarantee you, he would have he would have thought three or four times. That's for sure. You know, you get some guy that works at Subway or something like that. You know, fifty grand might have bought him. Now that guy, myself, about three six figures. So I think I figure my scale would be about seven fifty to a million. I'd be bought in a heartbeat. Now you, Tom, you're up there a bit. Just like you said, I don't know how much it takes to buy a radio station, but if some chick offered you a billion dollars, I'm sure you'd be all over it. Yep, and I'd stayed just long enough to make sure that when I got divorced, I could take it with me when I went. Exactly. That's it. <laughs> it's a simple world. It's run by money. Who doesn't want some? You're right. Well, 
I love you, Dad. Take me out old school, and uh, you have a good one. Here you go, Brian. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Jason. Hi, Tom. Hi. I've got a story for you. How about this? Uh, I'm dating a model right now, and uh, <clears throat> so she's got she's got money, but the one thing that I have that she wants from me instead of money is a child. And uh, so she offered me $10,000 to impregnate her, and I said, well, I thought about this, you know, and I said, well, I, I'm not going to have kids in my lifetime. I just don't want the burden. I don't want the expenses or responsibility or anything because I, you know, my, my goals are, you know, that don't involve a family and kids. So and I said, well, so I came back and counteroffered. I said, it's going to cost you 500000 because it costs 250000 to raise a child to the age of 18. And if, uh, if it comes down to the court system, then, I'm gonna if I'm gonna have to fork over the money, then I'll just give her two fifty back and keep two fifty for myself. What do you think of that? Well, uh, you know, many people will pay to make something go away or make somebody go away. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's that's right. But I just, yeah, it, it's it's amazing what women will do to get what they want to fulfill their own personal needs in life. You know. Well, that's the thing, though, with all these people, t you know, those eHarmony commercials particularly annoy me with all this talk about soulmates. Oh, yeah. You know, a, a soulmate is what you go after after you can't marry for money. Exactly. <laughs> I, totally. well, funny, look at the people totally in those agree. commercials. Once, once you realize you have no value on the open market, then you start believing in love and soulmates and all of that. Exactly. Exactly. That's funny. Well, Tom, appreciate it. Take me out to uh, Kobe style with uh, Thank You Jesus. Here you go, Jason. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here comes Paul on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Love the show, man. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to call in because I have pretty hands-on experience in this situation. I was engaged about seven years ago to a multimillionaire female who was in textiles that was about seven years older than me. She's honestly about a, an L.A. 7. She uh, had great fake rack, you know. We had a good time, and... Uh, I was bartending at the time, and I stopped bartending because there's no point in me bartending when I'm living with a multimillionaire and engaged. So I, I started working with her at her factory, and uh, the relationship started to deteriorate. Mind you, we had about $100,000 in cash in our kitchen safe, and we were living on the water in Manhattan Beach. And for those of you listeners that don't know where Manhattan Beach is on the water, it's high rent district in in L.A. Oh yeah, yeah. You and, you uh, cannot you cannot get a house on the beach now in Manhattan Beach for less than ten million. Right, right. So uh, you know, it was things were going along fine, and then the relationship started to deteriorate because we were working together and spending too much time together. And uh, she, so I stayed at home. And uh, she wanted me to start cleaning up the house and learning to cook and basically becoming a house husband, which wasn't going to happen. And uh, I wasn't happy, and all the money in the world wasn't going to change that. And uh, I walked. I walked with nothing but my the clothes on my back, and uh, I'm a hell of a lot happier for it. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, so money does not buy love, and it definitely doesn't buy away all the problems. And I easily could have marched out of there with all the money in that safe, but I decided, you know what, that's just a headache that's going to follow me around. So uh, so I, I beat it, and uh, I'm better off for it. And now I'm listening to Like It's 101, and I'm a happy man. Hopefully getting more ass than a toilet seat. Quite a bit, quite a bit. But So take me out old school, Tom. Here you go, baby. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.